falls under fair use as it's a parody. If you don't have a sense of humor, go f Welcome. Is this my reality? Is this your reality? Welcome to Not My Reality. In this reality, rock stars Chris Cornell and Chester Bennington were murdered. At the time, fans were devastated to learn of Chester Bennington's death. He was the frontman of Linkin Park. The rocker died, but even more tragic was the fact that his death came so close so soon after his good friend, fellow rocker Chris Cornell, had also passed away. And What's weird about it is the two passed away in eerily similar circumstances. Exactly two years and two days and on what would have been Cornell's 53rd birthday. Two very similar deaths under suspicious circumstances. Did you know that before Chris Cornell died he had seen several broken ribs and a fractured skull? And Chester, Chester was found dead in the same way Chris was. According to the reports, both Chris and Chester were found in their bedrooms with elastic bands around their necks. And both had physical evidence of a physical altercation before they died. So what's really going on with the death of these two rock stars? Well, there's an interview with music rock journalist Randy the Rocket Cody of the Metal Den. In that interview, he has a lot of things to say, and here's one of them. So the EMT that worked on Chris Cornell's lifeless body was recorded on audio stating that Chris had trauma to the back of the head and a possible signs of strangulation. Now, the autopsy report by Theodore Brown in Detroit makes no mention of the head wound, despite the fact that fans who watched Chris's final concert on YouTube noticed that a large chunk of hair has apparently been ripped out of his head in a violent manner. Read the comments from literally hundreds of fans. It's not just me who sees the head wound. You can see it. Here's a picture of it. Fight the Matrix. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Smash that notification bell. And if you don't, I'm going to come to your house and take away all your Linkin Park CDs. So why, why would Chris Cornell offer himself? Why would he do this? Chris, he was starting to work on a new Soundgarden album, and he was very excited about that. He was allegedly a good father and a husband. But he had a lot to live for. Despite what everyone else wants you to believe, this guy was worth millions and a big-time music icon. Sure, this guy had demons. We all do. Right? Like everybody. But this guy was a fighter. And he was all about living life and seeing things all the way through. Listen to his final song, The Promise. Cornell was all about fighting to stay alive and being hopeful for the future. Randy went on to say, and I agree with him, he has no idea why Cornell's wife would have cremated the body so fast without calling for a second opinion from a different medical examiner, independent from the Detroit morgue, who is known to botch many cases in the past. According to research, Vicki Cornell said it herself that she does not think Chris killed himself intentionally, right? Well, then why not find out the truth? And how is the media spinning this? Well, Harvey Levin from TMZ told a bold-faced lie when he said that nine rib fractures sustained by Chris happened during CPR, and that's normal. He quoted the American Heart Association in Dallas. So Randy got on the phone with them or got in contact with them, and they found out that the average is only about one or three rib fractures per patient. This indicates that Chris suffered some type of blunt force trauma in a fight that took place in his hotel room after the show. What are they really hiding here? What's really going on? 
What makes people think this isn't what they're saying? That this is possibly a murder for both of these men? Well, number one, there's too much blood on the scene for taking your life by hanging, according to forensic science. Also, a UCLA pathologist last month was quoted in an International Business Times article on the matter saying it looked like way too much blood for a hanging. In fact, if Chris bashed his head on the door while convulsing during the hanging, his blood would have been on the door. But it wasn't. His blood splatter was found on the floor in front of the tub and directly sprayed into the tub. The only way that can happen is by blunt force strikes to the head. Forgive the use of code words, but YouTube's going to be honest for this one. So let's talk about it. Who is Linda Ramone and why is she close to Chris Cornell's family? Linda Ramone is the widow of Donnie Ramone from the punk rock band The Ramones. And she's also an alleged Satanist with ties to Courtney Love and spirit cooker Marina Abramovich, who just happens to be friends with John Podesta, the man who is purportedly involved in sea trafficking and ritual sacrifices. Look, we know the mainstream media is trying their hardest to cover this up. They're trying to make it look like fake news. They give it fake names. But extensive research shows that there is an indeed a large elite evil P ring active today. People, sources say, who work in the rock music business that Chris Cornell and Chester Bennington were going to expose this before they died. Look, a guy named Seth Rich. He leaked scary details and emails via WikiLeaks last year about Podesta in his weird, his weird shit. And then shortly afterward, he was found dead. And what about Chester Bennington? Who is John Podesta? Who is this person? It's been rumored that Chester was the bastard son of this John Podesta. They share an identical resemblance. Look at this picture. Now, Podesta is a very powerful person in Washington, D.C., and he has worked for the Clinton crime family. Now, Chester Bennington, who was 41, he was found dead in his home near Los Angeles, had a strong bond with Chris Cornell, and died on what it would have been the Soundgarden singer's 53rd birthday. Bennington was also godfather to Cornell's 11-year-old son, Chris. Bennington was found hanged from a bedroom door. There was no note left in his room, which mirrored how Chris Cornell was found. Now, neither one of these men with wives and families and friends left a note. I'd find that shady right there. The theory, the theory that the mainstream media doesn't want you to listen to is the fact that Chris Cornell was about to expose an elite P-ring before he passed away. Now, a friend of his at Facebook, Chris Keen, says he can no longer keep his mouth shut. This statement from Keen says, So, I kept my mouth shut on this for a while due to fear of backlash. But fuck that, he says. I'm letting it all out. Chris and Chester were murdered. I'm not buying this s shit for one minute anyone who knows about chris and chester knows they were best friends chester was even chris's son's godfather the two of them worked together in the chris and vicky cornell foundation who helped prevent the s exploitation of vulnerable children chris also worked with the clinton administration pay attention the clinton administration on a ccp surface out of haiti that was later found to be a human trafficking ring. Oh no, not the Clintons. They'd never do anything like that. Now, several journalists who tried to break this story, and they died suddenly. Rumor has it that these men had acquired a list of people in the mainstream media, the government, and the acting world who were involved in this human trapping in P-Ring. Rumor has it that Chris Cornell was apparently about to blow the lid off of this. Coincidentally, 
shortly thereafter, they found the man dead. And then, in almost the same exact fashion, his best friend, fellow rocker Chester Bennington, is found dead. The exact same way as Chris was. Something's not adding up here, people. If Chris hung himself, then why does his autopsy report show that he had head trauma and nine cracked ribs? Anybody knows anything about singing knows that with nine cracked ribs, it would be impossible to perform. Thus, making it impossible to have performed the night of his death. These are signs of a man fighting for his life. A recent injury, something that happened after he sang. And Chester Bennington, his friends and family early on said he was murdered by elite peas. The tragic and suspicious untimely death of the Lincoln Park singer Chester Bennington has left many people questioning. What about the true nature of his passing? Now the mainstream media is desperately trying to push the S narrative while accusing anyone who questions his ruling of spreading wild lies. Like me. But I question what they say. Now despite the claims from his close friends and family that he was in no way suicidal. That's what they said. His wife, Talinda Ann Bentley, even posted from her official Twitter account that she had evidence that he was murdered and that his death was made to look like a suicide. Quote, he was already dead before he hung himself. I have proof. The posts were deleted, of course, shortly after without explanation. Yet, the mainstream media was quick to declare that her account was hacked without a single word of confirmation. They did not commit S, but instead were killed. That's what Anonymous, the hacker group, that's what they say, and they state they have compromising documents to back up their story. Who else does this remind me of? Paul Walker. Paul Walker, the Fast and Furious star. You might ask, well, what does this have to do with Paul Walker? What the fuck are you talking about right now? Well, right before Paul had his one car accident, Walker was set to come forward to expose the Clinton Foundation, the crimes against children in Haiti. Not only did the Clinton Foundation, the Clinton crime family rob the Haitian people blind, but they were involved in trafficking. It was a breaking story. And it seems really friggin' weird to me that a single car collision can happen on an open road like that. Is it true? I believe like all the people that died that had a connection to the Clintons, they, they, this all needs a very thorough investigation, okay? Come on. How far are we going to let this go?